Welcome to a lesson on the isosceles triangle theorem. The goals of the video are to state the isosceles triangle theorem, prove the isosceles triangle theorem, and then state the isosceles triangle converse. Let's first define an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides, as we see here. The isosceles triangle theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent, as we see here. And the main goal of this video is to prove this theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides would also be congruent. Now let's talk about our strategy. In order to prove this theorem, we're going to construct an angle bisector, as we see here in red. And we can do this because every angle has one angle bisector. So now to prove that angle B is congruent to angle C, we're going to prove that these two smaller triangles are congruent, and therefore corresponding parts would also be congruent. So let's take a look at how we could prove that these two triangles would be congruent. If this is an angle bisector, we know that angle BAD, this little angle here, would be congruent to angle CAD, and the two small triangles would share side AD, and of course AD is congruent to itself. So by side, angle, side, we can prove these two triangles are congruent, and therefore angle B would be congruent to angle C, proving the isosceles triangle theorem. So let's go ahead and set up the proof now. We'll start by stating the given. We know segment AB is congruent to side AC, so we do have an isosceles triangle. Step two will bisect angle A by constructing an angle bisector. Well, number one, the reason was given. Number two, the reason is every angle has one angle bisector. Step three, if AD is an angle bisector, we, we can say that angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. This is by definition of an angle bisector. So we know this little angle here is congruent to this little angle here. And then for the other congruent side, we can state that segment AD is congruent to itself. This is by the reflexive property. And now we have enough information to state that the two small triangles are congruent to one another. So we can say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD. Remember these vertices must be listed in corresponding order. And the reason for this is the side angle side postulate. And since these two triangles are congruent, we can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle C. And the reason for this is that corresponding parts of congruent triangle are congruent. CPCTC. And now we have a proof of the isosceles triangle theorem. And there's a corollary to this theorem. The corollary states that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base at its midpoint. So D would be the midpoint of segment BC and it forms a right angle with that segment. We won't prove this corollary in this video. But I do want to finish by stating the isosceles triangle theorem converse. This is sometimes called the base angles theorem. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, for example if angle B is congruent to angle C, then the opposite sides are congruent. So if these two angles were congruent, then segment AB is congruent to segment AC. Again, this is the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. I hope you found this video helpful.